The very impressive permanent magnet motor of Charles Flynn is shown in patent US 5455474 of October 1995. The patent states that the motor produces a substantial amount of output energy and torque. Because it has a battery, you might mistake it for a motor which is powered by electricity, but it is most definitely not. It is a motor whose power comes from permanent magnets, and there is electromagnetic screening driven by a 9 volt dry battery. With that dry battery, the motor reaches 2000 revs per minute. The basic design is based on this arrangement here. In this arrangement, the vertical output drive shaft, which is there, is mounted on two bearings, one, two. Those bearings are supported by the upper plate, as it's called in this particular illustration. The rotor has a single magnet in it and the magnet is embedded in a non-magnetic disc. On the stator there is a ring magnet and some coils on top of the ring magnet. The ring magnet south pole is attracted strongly by the north pole of the rotor magnet. As drawn there's not the slightest inclination for the rotor to rotate, as the rotor magnet pulls straight down. The challenge is therefore to produce a powerful rotational movement from the arrangement. These are the working parts. The key factor is a set of seven coils and the two rotor magnets. If one rotor magnet is directly over a coil, then the other magnet will be halfway between two other coils. This is a clever arrangement. With no coil powered up, the situation is this. You have a direct pull between the south pole of the rotor and the north pole of the stator. There are also sideways poles, but they balance out. So effectively, the only um, power applied to the rotor there is straight down. Now, the opposite magnet on the rotor straddles two coils. It's halfway between coil thir 32 and coil 34. Now, if you turn on coil 32. That is, you turn it on in such a way that it opposes the attraction between the rotor magnet and the stator ring magnet. Then there will be a sideways pull towards coil 34 and the magnet will move in that direction and then stop. But we don't want it to stop. So we switch on coil 34 at just the right moment and the process repeats. The rotor gets pulled continuously to the right. The switching is done by a timing disc. Timing disc is uh, enclosed between two other discs. The disc at the top has got seven LEDs on the underside. The disc on the bottom has seven phototransistors or uh, optical dependent light resistors. Um, the optical slot, the optical disc itself has got two slots in and the slots correspond to the two magnets on the rotor. So the rotor is the only moving part in this motor. The optical disc is attached to the rotor. Uh, this is the optical disc here, and this is the rotor shaft there, supported on bearings, which attach to this member across here. 
the um, next step in developing this motor is to add another stator ring uh, above the rotor so that the rotor is between two identical stator ring magnets. Um, this is an, an effective way of increasing the power. It increases the power as well as you turn on two coils and the pulls are both in opposite directions giving a net directional thrust to the right. This is a very useful arrangement and this can be replicated as many times as you want on a, a rotor shaft and every time you add a drive section it increases the power of the motor very considerably. This one here has got four drive sections and then the same timing section. That gives a powerful motor. Charles Flynn gives a circuit for driving one of the coils and this is the circuit. The LED is powered from the battery through a resistor and when the timing disk slot comes opposite it the light shines through and drops the resistance of the opto device which then raises the voltage between this resistance and the opto device. That raises the voltage on the grid of a field effect transistor and then the resistance between the drain and the source drops dramatically feeding current through the coil back to the battery. The FET connections are like this. You have the grid at one side, the drain in the middle and the source at the other side. There are seven of those circuits, one for each coil. I've shown two here because adding more doesn't really help. That's your circuit for the first coil as we just shown and then an identical circuit surrounded by this dotted green line uh, is uh, the one that powers up the next coil around. As it would normally be seven sets of magnets then the coils positioned directly above each other can be connected in a chain like this. The circuit is the same uh, but the drive from the drain of the FET goes through every coil in that vertical line all the way up and then back round to the battery. There are eight coils being connected in that particular arrangement. This is a very simple and straightforward magnet motor with all of the output power coming from the magnets and none coming from the battery. Battery is only used as an electromagnetic shield to produce unbalanced forces. I keep getting asked what wire and how many turns for each coil but there's no answer to that. The magnetic effect of a coil is not related to the power fed into it and a coil with many turns of fine wire drawing little current can easily have a stronger magnetic field than a coil with fewer turns of thicker wire and much higher current draw. Admittedly the speed at which the coil reacts depends considerably on the thickness of the wire and the voltage applied to it but I don't think that's critical in this particular design. Also, magnets vary a great deal in their strength and there's no way that I can know how powerful your magnets are. Finally, the gap between the magnets makes a major difference. So I suggest that you construct the basic version of the motor as a first step. You just have one stator ring magnet. You choose the gap between the rotor and the stator then you choose a wire diameter and wind a coil to see what effect it has. Try different coils to see what works really well with your magnets and then use that coil everywhere. While the rotor magnets are shown as tapered towards the output shaft that is not essential. 
and rectangular magnets can be used. These notes are at www.freeenergyinfo.com forward slash flynn.pdf.